On this week's show, can you buy a three-bed HMO? In the news, how will our new Prime Minister affect property investing? And we're going to be answering all your property-related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to this week's Property Investors Podcast. Um, intro- We've got so much going on right now. It's so busy. It's just absolutely like insane. Like we yeah. could literally, we could do a <clears throat> podcast just talking about what we've been up to yeah. this week. Uh, what it, we're obviously both moving house. We'll save. We'll save that. Um, I saw that when we did the Facebook Live, you you sort uh-huh. of positioned your your Porsche keys. Oh, there she is. The Porsche is here. Oh. It's here. It is Porsche, by the way. I've told you I'm, that. I'm going to have to retract my earlier statement <laughs> because when I was at, when I was picking it up. I told them. I told them that we had a discussion about this on our podcast. I said Russell says it's Porsche. I say it's Porsche, and the guy went, "Yeah, it's Porsche." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, "We get it drummed into us at the factory. Whenever they go to the factory, every morning they they, they do like a thing where they they all they they, they, they have a, a thing they say, and it's Porsche. They, they get it drummed into them. It's Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. It's yeah, not Porsche. I know. I, told, I, I said I said to us so, this morning. I rang him this. Was it was it yesterday? I can't remember. I rang him. I said. So I haven't, I haven't actually seen it yet. No. Well, we've been together, but we've been in London, and you don't really drive in London. So no, you've been no, parking no. miles away. And I was like, oh, you have to take me out. Yeah, after work today, after we finish the podcast, you have to you know, give me a ride. And he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, translation, can you give me a lift home? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wonder why that is. <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, that's very So, cool. what have you been Car up to story. last week? What well, we, we were running an event, weren't we? Yeah. We were running Rent to Rent Revolution. So, it's like a, um, for our Academy members, three-day yeah. event. Um, it was awesome, wasn't it? It was phenomenal. Really was phenomenal. Even so, if we do say so ourselves. Yeah, it really was. We we come off the back of, there was a DFE, and then we had, DFE was Monday, Tuesday, where it was, and then we had a crash course. I've not been around, because I went to Miami. Crazy, I crazy, got back from Miami on the Thursday, went straight to the crash course. That was that was on the on Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was at DFE. Yeah. Then I went on holiday. Yeah. Cut that short to come back from around. The last month, I've just been like, you know, I haven't been Pulling in around. I've been just traveling around. Well, we, like we had the DFE, then we had a crash course, and then we went straight down to London for the four days rent to rent revolution and launch pad. Um, and it was. What was awesome London, is. Awesome. Rent to rent revolution finished on <coughs> Saturday. Saturday night. Which, which, I mean, we are now on Monday. So yeah. we're talking two days later. And there've already been people that have gone and got deals mm. over the weekend. There's people that have got deals, oh, are collecting Sunday. the keys this week. I know at least two people. Yeah. Well, literally, we had the whole room. We taught them how to get the deal. How, yeah. We were getting people getting deals. I mean, obviously, I had to go and view the property. Yes, yeah. But getting deals in principle. There was about 15, 20 deals yeah. over the phone yeah. in principle. It was just but a manic, manic weekend. It we was talk all the time, don't we, about implementation, about how you can learn everything. Yeah. But unless you actually go out and do it, it's pointless. You're just learning it. Yeah. Um, and the, the people, there were, I think there was a lot of serious action takers in that room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's proof, proofs in the pudding. They've they've gone out, they've secured deals, they're collecting the keys this week. I know. In and Manchester, were, everyone there was amazing. The energy in the room was amazing. Anyway, yeah. that's what we've been up to this week. So uh, on this week's show, th- uh, three bed HMOs. Do they mm-hmm. work? Um, I know that some people make them work, but I think I think it depends where it is, and I think in general I would say no. But I know, I know there is some people that make them work. See, on the eviction, the first two challenges, one of those was a three-bed HMO. Was it? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. I thought, it was, I thought they were all four-bed. No, your one was a, your one was a four, <coughs> my the one I had was a three. What was it? Was that, and was that profitable? Yeah. Decent the, the thing ROI. is, the reason when I'm saying it doesn't, it it might not work as well um, is because it's if you have a void, if you have a, an extended void period. So if it's in an area where there's very few voids, i.e. like the property, if it fills up, it, it gets, it, if it if it becomes void, it gets filled up very quickly, then I wouldn't say it's much of a worry. But anyway, but, if you have voids, I mean, is that the single No, no, work? but what I mean, if you have a void? what I mean, yeah, I know that, but what I mean is if you've got a four bed and you have one void, you've still got three rooms paying rent. Yeah, but if you have a single let, you have one void, you've got no rooms. Yeah, but we're not talking single lets, we're talking HMOs. Single lets HMOs different different you you you're talking to a different clientele, different different customer base completely. Um and like certainly um we've always Simon's always said two two rooms pay the bills and the rents and the mortgages 
and then the other two rooms are profit. So if you've only got three rooms and you have one void, you're not making much money there, are you? Whereas if you've got four rooms and one void, you've still got that extra room paying your money. So I think it could, it, it can, obviously it can work because I know people that are doing it. I just think you've got to be a lot more careful about where you're buying, where you're buying and what areas. Like for instance, if you're in the south, I know I know several people that have got like three or four bedroom houses that are just renting out three bedrooms, but they're renting the rooms out at seven eight hundred pound, and that's that's plenty of money. Um, but where you're getting cheaper rents is where I'd be worried about. Okay, well let's let's look let's look at HMOs and we'll try and work it out and see what we think. Then mm-hmm. we'll, we'll come up with a conclusion for the end of the day. Okay. So first of all, do three bed HMOs work? I suppose the first thing you've got to ask is a three bed a three bedroom house. Yeah, would of course work. Yes, absolutely. Because, it could, because a three-bedroom house yeah. would be a four-bed HMO. Yeah. What, if, what, what, if not necessarily. What? Not it necessarily. Could be. As long as it's got um, adequate communals and space like that. So it has to have two receptions. All right, so what do we need? <clears throat> what, for a three-bed HMO? No, for, a, for a, just so people are we're all on the same page, what do you need for a HMO? First of all, you've got the minimum room sizes. Minimum room sizes, 70 square metres. 70 wow. square meters, that's huge. The, these, these rooms, honestly, mm-hmm. the, the, the standards today, 70 square meters, it's bit, literally bigger than my room. Little palaces. Bigger than a house. Um, 70 square feet, um, and it has to have, obviously, a communal if the rooms are on, on under 100 square feet. So you need, generally, a, pl- a building that's got two reception rooms, or a massive kitchen diner where you can have, do you know, like a really extended kitchen diner, where you can have half of it as a communal, half of it as a kitchen. Um, so th- th- like that, but like for instance, um, so technically, if you had a, a three bed HMO, yeah, it could technically be a two bed house. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so Which, it'd be cheaper to buy. V- well, much cheaper to, to rent buy. if you do not rent to rent. Absolutely, you could absolutely. Yeah, as long as long as the numbers, like, you've got to look at every deal 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 at a time. You can't you, you can't just say as a blanket it does not work or it, it won't work, but. I think if you're going to do it, you've, you've got to be super, super careful that the numbers stack up and that it's in a prob- an area where there probably has good rental demand, like really good rental demand. Because, for instance, if you've done it in Hull, I would say no because the rooms are a little bit slower to rent out in Hull, so you, you could avoid periods longer. Um, and that, I don't know. But isn't it, isn't it, in a way, isn't it easier to rent out than a four-bed because you've only got to fill three rooms, not four? So as long as but the you're figures... Still, all you're doing is renting out one room, aren't you? You're not renting out the whole house, are you? So in a HMO, you're looking to rent one room at a time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But surely that's easier then because you've only got to do it three times. So it's like 25% easier. Yeah, I mean, the fact if it's a three bed or a four, four bed say, makes no difference is, to rent the, other, the room out. Well, the other thing you but, said, let me just, just point out something else mm-hmm. as well. So you said, let's say you check, you, the area's got to be really good because you might have voids. But let's say you picked an area mm-hmm. with a four bed mm-hmm. and you picked the same area with a three bed and it was just as bad. If the three bed, you only filled two, two rooms. Yeah. Wouldn't the four bed you only fill two rooms as well? Because yeah, but t- yes, but what I mean in general, okay, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're coming at. You're still going to have a void period, but like for instance, I've got like we've got a friend who uh, an academy member who lives in Dagenham, and he lives in a HMO. He literally one of his te- one of the one of the people moved out the same day the next person moved in, and that happens all the time. Yeah, whereas. So a, a, a three bed would be you'd have less, you th- you might still have the same void periods, but you, but you would have less void periods because you've got less rooms. Yeah, yeah, potentially. So but, sure, it just makes it easier. Uh, what I'm getting at is, I I personally would be more comfortable with a four bed, um, and it, if they're in the south, it's different. A three bed might work. If it's in the north, listen, you're not making any sense. I am. Right, do you know, I know in my head, I am. I'm just not getting across. Your, it, well. <laughs> That's kind of key to this. It's podcast. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the workings of Alastair's mind. At the end of the day, it's the cogs are clocking. Um, at the end of the day, the... But look, look, just simple right now. Right. You have two houses on a street. Yeah. Right. One of them's a four bed. Yeah. One of them's a three bed. Yeah. Right. You decide to buy the four bed because it's safer. Yeah. Right. It's in the same street. Because you're worried if you buy the three bed, you might only fill two rooms. Yeah, but you might only still fill two rooms in four well, beds. What's the yes, difference? but my point being is you've got more opportunity in the four bed to make money. Now, so do you know where I think where, where I think you actually point is, but you're not saying it? It's the bills, and it's the... No. Go on, what right. do you think? I think your point is, because it depends on the ROI, right, yeah. of course. So with four beds, you've got, you've got a chance to make extra money out of yeah. it. Makes sense to have more bedrooms, right? Yeah. So then you've got to look at the return investment. If your return investment was good for the three, mm-hmm. I don't see it as more of a risk than a four, because as long as you're going to fill the rooms, but... You never buy a four thinking, well, I only want to fill three rooms well, anyway. You, you want to fill them all anyway, right? So it doesn't, 
But the, the difference is you have, and from someone who's managed a lot of HMOs, yeah. There's certain rooms so that are difficult to fill, mm-hmm. right? So like, do you know smaller rooms, the, the small rooms, yeah, basically. the small rooms, yeah, yeah. the box rooms. Yeah. So when when you've got a four bed, you might have three double rooms and one box that room. fill like that, and one <clears> box <throat> room is a bit of a nightmare. If you had a three bed that had a box room that was a bit of a nightmare, you might be screwed. Is that yeah. your point? Well, th- my point is, yes, that, and also that. With four beds, we've all we've always said that two rooms pays all the bills, pays all pays all your costs, and then you've got two rooms for profit. So if you take that 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 sort of theory to a three bed, two rooms pay your bills, and then you've only got one room making the profit. But that is a rule of thumb. Yeah, I know it is. And but generally, um, the bills are not going to differ that much for an extra bedroom, not that much. It might, they might go down a little bit. No. But the purchase price might not be that much different either. So, like, for instance, in Hull, you can buy a two-bed in the same street as a three-bed for, like, not much less mm. than a four. So why would you go for a smaller property? And to me, it's about risk. I know you. I, I know if you've got a four-bed and a, a four-bed and a three-bed HMO on the same street and only you've still only got two rooms for that's fine. But you haven't... It, you haven't got the opportunity to fill four rooms in this. You've only got the opportunity to fill three. So I don't think you'll ever make as much money. Even if the ROI is right, even if the ROI is still 20%, you're still never going to make as much cash flow in this one. Obviously you're not, because it's just, I just don't think you are. But that's why I'm not in, I, I wouldn't personally do a three bed unless it's in London. But surely, surely it just dep- it, de- it depends on the, on the individual. Oh, listen, of course, more rooms are better. Mm-hmm. Or what, right, always because... Fine, so let's just say, and I, this is not specific to, again, this is, in my head it's right, but in, it's going to sound daft, but I don't care. Right, so don't if, worry, we kind of if, you, if you've got a three bed, mm. now, and, and a three bed and a four bed, right? Yeah. And let's just say that third tenant, okay, right, so you've got four tenants in one property, three right. tenants in one property. Oh Yeah, we're all right? totally following Listen, you. right? right four, yeah. bed, four tenants in one property, three tenants in another, yeah. and you get one tenant is a, is a complete no bed, right? Stops paying his rent, all sorts. You've still got three tenants in this place paying the rent, whereas in this one you've only got two. Do you know what I mean? So I, I just like that extra tenant. But but that is that is a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, yeah. Because w- what's easier, what's better, a single letter or a HMO? But we're not talking about I know, that. But just, this is just extreme. What's better? Was it was easier? Easier, single easier. there every day of the week. Well, because why? Because you you've got one, less what less what less hassle less tenants less, less tenants. Yeah. So why suddenly is a four bed better than a three? Because you got you got the advantages of a HMO. You got less tenants. I get that. But then if you're going to go three bed, why not go single let? Good single let. Because you make more money. Not much more. By the time you pay all the bills, you're probably making well, the same the sort question. of money. If you, so look, if, if you, you're not, then 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 it's no good. But the one, so hang about right. Let's just say. By the way, just to be clear. Yeah. I don't really like three beds. No, no, I know you don't. Right. But so a four like, okay four bed HMO and uh, like Wolverhampton and make about fifteen hundred. Right, we get about three fifty to three eighty. Um, maybe four, I think one of the rooms gets four twenty whatever. Right. Um. So if you say let's just say ballpark figure, the average room rent is three hundred and fifty quid in the Midlands, yeah. Um, so three fifty times three fifty is seven fifty. Another uh, seven hundred. Another three hundred. A thousand and fifty. Okay, so a thousand and fifty on a three bed. You drop one tenant off there because he he starts not paying his rent or whatever. You you're down at sorry a thousand and fifty. You drop the bills off. So what would your typical bills on a a, a three bed HMO be? No, four hundred quid, five hundred quid. By the time you pay mortgage, council tax, all that it, sort of stuff. It so depends on it. I know it is, but. It, by a, by a rule of thumb, we sort of say 40, 45%, yeah? So let's just drop, let's just say it's 500 quid. You're only left with 500 then. Yeah, but if you, but... But you get a good single let, you could be left with 500. That's what I'm getting at. So if you're going to go three bed, why not just go big single let? Like a decent single let? I know, but again, it all depends it all on... De- I'll give you an it's example. Not, it's, you can't, it's not a blanket, there's not a blanket ruling for this. No. It's a it's a case by case, and it's a case of let's, let's look at every single one as they come. Because I think I think you made some good points. Um, I think you made some good points. So, badly, but I think you made some good points. They are, I, I know what's they're, going they're on in, in here. They're in your head, they're in your head. Just Maybe you can do subtitles. <laughs> Scottish subtitles. <laughs> anyway. Tra- translate the, the bamblings of, of Alastair. Basically, in a nutshell, I think three bed HMOs suck unless they're in London. So in London, I think I'll do them in London because the room rents are far higher. 
and you like far higher. What like, about somewhere like Oxford then? Where you can get really good room rate, room rates, Oxford, Cambridge, like so. For instance, um, I go, I bring back, I come back to this house in Dagenham. They're getting like eight hundred pound a room, and there's the property is not. When we were looking in Cambridge, it was like eight fifty a room. Yeah, the other day we were shocked. Yeah. We were shocked how high it was. But th- this is my point, though, right? It's all about return on investments. All your other points, I understand what you're saying, but. I think a three bed works if it's in the right area. Yeah. It's a little bit more difficult to make work in, in cheaper areas. Yeah, I think but so. But if it's in the right area mm-hmm. and if you get the right house, yeah. I think you need to make sure you've got all rooms are good. But to be honest, I kind of think that with four beds because it's it's very easy to say, oh, if you've got a box room that doesn't really rent out, well, then that's not a very good house, is it? No, it's not. Cause it you, don't want a, you don't want a house that no. you're struggling to rent one of the rooms. Um, so you want to get a house that all the rooms rent out anyway. Do you know I was in a HMO um, like two weeks ago? It was a it, I was I dropped a, I picked a friend up from there who lives in a HMO, and um, he showed me his room, and it's like huge, and the, every single room in his house was like this. It was probably about 140 square meters square feet. It was humongous. Like his double bed was in the corner, and it's like he's still got like like so much room. Yeah. And if this was um. I can't remember where it was. It was Walthamstow. And every, in London? Yeah, in London. It was Walthamstow. And this is a six-bed property, and every room's that size. And they've all got, like, a little own suite in the corner and everything. Every And he pays... I bet he pays uh, north of... About, about one, two? No, 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 no. Um, he, they're all that, they're all that size thereabouts, but the biggest room in that property is £1,050 a month, and he pays eight ninety. Wow. So, do you know what I mean? He's paying like top whack. For an ensuite and everything. That's not bad though in London. I, I didn't think so. For an ensuite and... But the room's huge. Honestly, it's, it's, it's like 140, 150 square, meter, square feet. Square meters. Square feet. Um, with ensuite and... And there you are. That's yeah. not bad. But if you imagine, if that, that, that probably wouldn't have been that much to buy. Like, it, it would be more than in Hull. It would be probably a couple hundred grand, 250 grand. But if you've got six rooms bringing in... 800 quid that's that's a that's a chunk yeah it's a wedge isn't it, it's it more, is. certainly there's a lot of profit we made there that's yeah. why i can that's why there's there is a lot of investors that just will not buy outside them areas mm. because they make the cash like they make really good returns yeah and um, they don't get the best sort of um so in summary then three bit hmo it does work but it's more difficult to work you've got to pick the right areas yeah would we go with that i have accepted so. that the person in stoke was getting about 20 percent roi yeah. In Stoke with a three bed HMO <clears throat> student student accommodation, it's because it's just a two bed house. They got it for they got it for so cheap. It depends on yeah. Again, it depends. I mean, he probably in Stoke and he bought it ten years ago. Or whatever he probably paid like thirty grand for. No, it, no but I mean, if we bought it off him now, that was that we were looking at buying it. We still would have got a twenty percent return on investment. Oh, okay, three bed HMO. He was getting all right. Fine. No, yeah. no, no. In Stoke, so it can work. If so, the other the other alternative, I suppose, would be if you can buy the house very very cheaply. Yeah. Um. Well, if you get them on lease options and things like that, if you get them on lease options and the the, the lease payments are quite low, then I don't know. So I hope three beds work. Well, this has clearly cleared it up completely. I'm I'm sure that everyone now has got a clear image in their minds of exactly (laughs) whether a three bed works. So I'm glad that we've managed to 100% lay it out, clarify it. I, I feel ready to move on. It's now time for this. Okay, so in the news, well, there's been one thing that's been in my Facebook feed news recently. Yeah. Uh, quite a lot. Um, and it's all about Boris Johnson. Boris Who? Johnson. Boris Johnson. Uh, oh. you, know, you know The Rock? Yeah, yeah. It's his cousin. Is he? Dwayne Johnson's Rock? No, I don't think so. It's funny, isn't it? Because everyone's Although got... he did make a statement that it was. <laughs> did he? The Rock, yeah. <laughs> everyone's got an opinion about him. Everyone, like, he's got his lovers and he's got his haters, isn't he? Mm. Um, well, I was talking about this. I was talking about this at, at DFA. Yeah, right, we did the DFA a few weeks ago. I think it was actually the day that he came in. Yeah, it was. And I was yeah. scrolling through my Facebook feed, and all it was was, "Oh no, Boris has come in. Oh Brexit. Oh, man, 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 politics particularly all, a, all the new could all the not news give general. a rip about politics and the reason that i don't 
is because I believe, uh, you know, the news and all, all that crap is just, there's so much negativity <laughs> about bullshit, it. Yeah. And I don't, don't want that negativity in my life. I agree with you. Um, you know, I was, I was saying the only time I watch the news is when, when, when me or Sam Miller are on it. Mm. <laughs> or, or I would if you were on it. Okay. Have you ever been on it? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, I was on it like last week, but you, you didn't tune in. Were you? No. Ah. <laughs> I was on the radio the other week. I didn't listen to that either. I would have listened if I'd known. What were you on? Uh, BBC Radio Northampton. What were you talking about? Just um, property and like what I've done. Really? Yeah. Why don't you tell me? I don't like to broadcast. But you're on the you you, you are broadcasting. You, a you're doing a podcast. No, but it was. And B, you're uh, on was, the radio. That was, is the definition of broadcast. Yeah, but it's just I've been on it a few times. I went I went on there um, when I was when we come back from Uganda. Um, and I've been invited. Do you, do you know I've been invited to speak at lots of radio stations in London? No. Uh, after my talk, I gave it the crash course. Uh, well, yeah, I set one of them up, if you remember. I didn't know about that one, actually. Okay. The um, So then... The, uh, Someone else said to me, like, oh, we want you on the show. I was like, I haven't got time, but you can have my crappy podcast partner if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got, yeah, I remember you got invited to speak at an event, and you were like, um, hmm... I think there was like 10 people there and you were like, yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. I'm busy that day, but I can send somebody down. <laughs> and you're like, hey, man, I've got, you, you come up to me and goes, hey, Alistair, I've got this really amazing event Is for you to speak at. It's about 100, but carry on. Yeah, he goes, I've got this really amazing event for you to go and speak at. Um, he goes, I can't make it, but he goes, I'd love it if you would go there and represent me. You represent me, you represent everything I do. He goes, please go there. And I get there and there's like fucking 20 people there. He's, he's such an exaggerator. Right? Every time, he's one of those people, right? He told me, he's like, the first time he tells us, every time he tells a story, it increases. <laughs> <just> 10 people. <laughs> Till you eventually get to the truth. <laughs> oh, no, in fairness, but... Um, after the, the a talk I'd done at a crash course a few weeks back, I had like loads of people ask me to... Uh, How many? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, not loads of people, I had, is it? No, one loads of them... Listen, of listen, three. listen, listen. One of them oh my is... Uh, he owns a media company and he's like very high up and he's got links to all the radio stations and stuff and he wants me to go and talk about um, various subjects um and then I had a lady stand up and she runs a radio station in South East London. She wants me to go and talk on there. How did we get to this from talking about I Boris don't know, Johnson? But it's just about media and about you said about being if we're not yeah. in the news. Yeah, so, yeah. Stuff, so, so me, me personally, I, I don't, I don't watch the news. No, if you watch, wrong. it's just all negative, and it's, you never see anything positive on there. I'd much really. rather read a book. Yeah, or listen to listen to an audio book. Mm -hmm. Than, than listen to the news and get because I, I, I'm a big believer in your environment and you want positive environment and, and negativity just, just like ugh you know like when you're on Facebook and, and the worst is Facebook when you see like those oh, videos of like it. horrible things it's like oh look at this he why should would be hungry. somebody post that why like, do people want to I, people I want saw to watch the other it? day like somebody post a load of um, like people being really cruel to animals and yeah. things like that why would they post that shit well, do you know on there, a little tip for you, on there, there's a, there's a button you can press. I haven't done it for a while because I did it ages ago. It doesn't happen, but you can sort of like um, press the button and then you can say, I do not want to see content like this. Mm. And it blocks it. I don't want it. It gives me a bad day. It gives me a bad day, yeah. 100%. I'm, see, I'm like, oh. And sometimes it happens to me, and this annoys me, when you're looking at sports news yeah, and you're reading, because I do like football, and I'm reading down the page and then there's some adverts for other news stories. Yeah. And just the advert, it's like, you know, and I'm like, oh, man. So, so oh. back to Boris. Back to Boris, um, yes. Basically, I don't like the news. I don't like I don't like politics. I believe... Do you, you like him? From what I've seen of him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's a bit of a bumbling idiot, but from what... In a way, but I think that's his persona. Yeah, I like what, Do I like him? Well, I like, I like some of his policies. So, yeah. here you go. Let, let, me, let me, t let me tell you something. So, one of the things he's planning on doing is um, scrapping stamp duty. Cool. For any house under five hundred thousand pounds. So as property investors, you lot should all be loving that. I think I think he's going to be great for property investors. Yeah. I think he's going to be great. He's very big into building lots of new homes. The, the thing is, right? How how really? Come on, let's just ask this. Really, how crucial is it? Who if we like the prime minister or not? Because he ca he cannot single handedly pass anything through the Commons. Well, no, it's not. It's not like we're under a dictatorship. No, of course we're not. So whatever he puts forward has to go through. Westminster, it has to be approved and it has to be voted against. So it like, doesn't matter if it's Boris Johnson or, or Russell Leeds, it doesn't matter. Well, that would be pretty cool. Well, I would say maybe. But it doesn't matter. My point being, it don't matter, does it? No. Because it's got to all go through 
Westminster. I think no. <coughs> listening to him, I posted a speech of his. I watched it on on Facebook about some of this. Like, did you know that there was more ha- more houses built? It was either this year or last year. More houses built than in any a year for the last thirty. 30 mm, years I didn't know uh, I think for property investors Good. I think and, and do you know who would I think would be the, the, the Jeremy Corbyn I do not want Jeremy Corbyn to get in but why not Jer- oh, really? I, I, I don't actually I don't follow politics I've got no interest in them I'm not massively because it doesn't, interested it, it, you lot might not like this but I couldn't give a rip it does not affect my life no. It does well, not affect my outcome. It is the thing, right? I think <clears throat> Boris will make it a bit easier for us. Yeah. I think Jeremy Corbyn will make it a bit harder. But I think either way, you'd be able to invest in property. Successful people will be successful, it doesn't matter who's in power. Yeah. Right? Broke people will find a reason to whinge about the... Per- and they'll blame the person in power for their brokenness yeah. and their like lack of success because it's the prime minister or the government. Yeah. No, take responsibility. It's your your life. You be responsible. Don't care who's in power. No, I'm not. I'm not too bothered. Give a rip. I'm not too bothered. Bring Donald Trump over. Get him in power. Ouch! That's going to be con- controversial right now. On the on the on the. Uh, on the don't, on I don't care. Yeah. No. Donald Trump. He'd be brilliant at running this country. Look what he's done for America. Oh, some thumbs down at that comment. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a popular opinion. It's not a popular, popular opinion. Uh, yeah. But, well, who cares? Yeah. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. No, I, 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 I agree. I agree. But I think Boris is going to be is going to be good for property investors. It'd be interesting. In. Does um, like or does does Donald Trump like Boris Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Donald Trump is has got a funny <laughs> way of going about stuff sometimes. But you can't argue with some of the results that. that no, he's you got, can't. So. No. You can't argue with that. Uh, but yeah, I, but more importantly, I think it's about focusing on, on, on like what you said, focusing on you, focusing on the stuff that you can control. So the thing is, po- I could get all bothered about politics and I could research it mm-hmm. and look into it. And, and what would it really change? Achieve, yeah. Do you know, it's like, um, I was in London a few weeks back and there was all these people down there marching and they were protesting. I can't even remember. It wasn't about politics. What a waste of time. What a waste of their day. Because do they really think, honestly, it was outside, it was on Parliament Square. And I don't even know what they were, I don't know if it was about who's in charge, I don't know. But there was like 45 of them just standing there with their placards going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I drove past thinking, you saddles, come on, man. Like, you've stood there all day doing absolutely do you know what? nothing. Do, you, something... do, they, do they really think the person's going to go, I, I, you've protested, I tell you what. Let's just change that for you. Yeah. Come on. Do you know what I do think? I do think there's certain circumstances where I could do that. If I was really passionate about something, Mm. well, maybe not for you, but for me, (laughs) if I was really passionate about something and it was coming in and I believe, this this is the rule. This is the way, this is the rule you got to do. You got to take, right? Do So something happens. Do I like it? Yes or no? Right? If you don't like it, if you like it, then great. Focus on it. Well, I'll be positive. If you don't like yeah. it, then you've got to think, okay, can I change it? Yes mm-hmm. or no? If I can't change it, I'm not going to whinge about it. I'm not no. going to moan about it. I'm going to get on with it and just ignore it and focus on the stuff that I can change, yep. like everything else in my life. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> if I can change it, then I've got to think, okay, how how bothered am I? Yeah. And if I'm really bothered, then okay, you could put in a lot of work. See, I, people are moaning to me about Boris. I'm like, are you going to run for MP then? <laughs> yeah, what well, would you do differently? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're not. Okay. Well, then stop. Because the truth is, right, is that unless you're really in the know, we don't know all the ins and outs. The media control what they want us to think, anyway. Yeah, you know, so. like you know, there's always an, they've always got an agenda. They've it's, always got their, and, and they're just gonna they're gonna feed that, and then that's what then everyone thinks, and then everyone's you don't know the you don't know. It's like the dude that's at a football match screaming and shouting at the football manager, telling them how to run the football game. And it's like, dude, you're you sat up there. Like, like with a belly like, like this. Yeah, and like, come on, man. You're sat up there and you're telling him how to run the football match. Like, work just, harder, yeah. you idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. come on, yeah. get yeah. real. I, I agree, I agree. <laughs> so rule of thought, here's the, here's the rule. If you can't change it, don't moan about it. Yeah. If you can change it, then decide, is it worth it? And if it is, then then, then do something. If it's not, but uh, you certainly don't, don't moan about it. No, I okay. agree. I completely agree with that. And I think Boris will be good for property investors. So there you go. There's, there, there's the good news. Right, it's now time for this. Yeah. 
Okay, so welcome to the questions and answers part. If you want to leave us a question, you can either comment on our YouTube videos or uh, if you join the Property Investors with Samuel Leeds Facebook group, we do a Facebook Live um, normally just before we film any show and yep. you get the opportunity to leave some questions on there. So make sure you join that group. Okay, so uh, first question from Lieben Ahmed. Will Article 4 have an impact on rent to HMOs? Well, yeah. Because if you're running it as a HMO, yep. you can't do it in Article Four area unless <clears throat> it's already been. It's already been. Um... It depends if you're looking for if you're looking for like a rent to rent, which is a single let, which you're going to then convert into HMO. Then yeah, absolutely. Uh, if it's an up and running HMO, then you wouldn't you wouldn't have to be too concerned about that because you'll have grandfather rights. Yeah, but you'll still have to be aware of Article Four. Yeah. 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 So yes, yeah. great question. It will. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, I've got one here. Uh, this is from PW. Uh, I don't know who you are, but PW, that's that's your initials. Powish. Uh, Power Woosh, yeah. A question regarding deal sourcing. What checklist or point plan do you use to check whether a property is suitable to put forward to your investors? Uh, so whenever we do a, go out and do a viewing, we have a like a 12-page viewing inspection form um, that we fill out. It just covers, like it details every room, um, room sizes, measurements, uh, measurements of doors, measurements of like everything basically, um, where the radiators are, where the power points, power points are, the windows, condition of this, condition of that, uh, condition of the roof, type of boiler, any sort of dates on the boiler, any dates on the electrical boxes. It's just, it's like a 12 page document um, that just goes through every single room, clearly lays out the condition, all that sort of stuff. So we use that. So just perhaps create something, put something together and use that for when you go out and try and pass that on to an investor. So hope that helps. Okay, I've got a question for Alastair from The Road to Financial Freedom. The question is just one word, actually. It's just, okay. Nice. So I believe he's talking to you. He is talking to me. Um, so, Road to Financial Freedom. Good luck. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I, I don't know if you've ever, ever noticed, but Alastair can't say okay. He says, okay. Okay! Right, and he does this quite a lot on, on stage, and I always take the mick out of him for it. Somebody's... Uh, oh, we talked about this last week, didn't we? Okay, no. I was about to tell the same story as I told before, so I won't bother. But basically, someone bought a mug saying, okay, I thought it was funny. He didn't. The end off. I, right. did, I didn't, I wasn't offended. We've got any questions on the Facebook Live? Go on, go on Facebook. Bring us a question from oh, Facebook. Oh, should we just call this dude out? Go on, which dude? That dude there. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got a question from James. Actually, it is a question as well. Has it ever occurred to you guys that you're a parasite? Um... Thanks, James. Um, has it ever occurred to you to know the difference between singular and plural? That's a good idea. Maybe you're as thick as you sound. <laughs> <laughs> has it ever occurred to you guys that you're Dude, a parasite? man, listen. That doesn't even make sense. Why would you go to the effort of, of calling somebody that? Like, if you've got nothing better to do with your life, Get a life, and do, you think, do you think it actually offends us? Do you think we read this and actually care? We don't, we don't care. It doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or, or form. Nick, cut, cut. Right, okay. Um, how, uh, it's from Ibrahim Sia, Said. How do you develop a relationship with estate agents, specifically for rent to rent? Uh, how would you go about approaching them, and what would you say to them? I'd say, <clears throat> how are you doing? How you doing? Yeah, uh, I, I help. How can I? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, re relationships with estate agents are are quite easy. They're very easy. Um, you're, oh, de you're dealing with people. But how are you doing work? You're dealing with people at the end of the day. So I would always, once you've got your area where you're working, I would always go in to see them. Don't phone them up because they get hundreds of phone calls weekly from people picking their brains. I would literally get on get on the ground. So you wouldn't phone get, them? I'd phone them initially to make an appointment, but not to but ask them for loads. You wouldn't keep phoning them. You play a bit no. hard to get. No. <laughs> Can we be serious for like one minute? Oh, I'm like, going to struggle. Right, just get in there, go and sit in front of them, meet them, be nice to them. I'm sure you're a nice person and I'm sure that will come across. Relationships come from So how do that. you do it then? Just fake I struggle. It. I get somebody else to do it for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I send somebody in. Um, but just get in there, meet them, treat their time with the same respect you want your time treated as. So like, I always say this, if you're, if you're booked to go to a viewing at nine o'clock and they're, they're there at nine o'clock and you arrive late, that's a very bad start. O always be on time because that estate agent might have 10, 15 viewings that day. And if you delay her by 15 minutes because you can't get there on time, that's well, not they're, a good I think start. They're they, li most, they leave, don't they, after 15 minutes? I don't know. But my point being is just do what you say you're going to do with them. If you say you're going to get there, get there. If you say you're going to go to the office, go to the office. Um, and I always find that, the, do you know the best way? The 
the best way is, is to do business with them. Do business, but if do you, it. If you, if, do you, it right. if you become a client of theirs, yeah. you know, and you start actually, you, you know, you use them. This is why this is why Alastair is the man at getting him with estate agents. Yeah. Because he's a deal sourcer. So he's using them all the time. And let me tell you something, right? If you're a deal sourcer and you're looking to get in with estate agents and you tell them you're going to buy a deal off them and you're going to pass it to an investor and you don't buy it, pass it to an investor because you haven't got any investors or you can't sell it, that you'll ruin that relationship with that estate agent. I would recommend, even if you're a deal sourcer and you've got a deal from an investor that you're going to pass to an investor, even if you can't sell it for money, give it away because it keeps a relationship with the invest with the estate agent. You could um, even do that for your first couple to build a relationship with the estate agent yeah. and with investors. We've talked about this before, haven't we? Yeah, deal yeah. For free, but yeah. All right, brilliant. Well, guys, thanks ever so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. We'll be back next Saturday at 7 p.m. We will see you there.